a British Secret Service agent versus Baba Yaga. That's what we're talking today as we do a reaction to Death Battle. Welcome, agents of Spectre. Pay close attention today as Mr. Wick gives a lesson on how to be an assassin. Patient, silent, deadly. On today's Bond Report. Hey guys, welcome back to the Bond Report. My name is Chris, AKA the Bearded Blofeld. If this is your first time here, welcome. I do a weekly video discussing different James Bond related items and topics. So if James Bond is your thing like he is mine, please consider subscribing. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Now, I have not watched this at all. I've watched a couple of the other ones just to kind of get an idea of how these videos flow. Without further ado, let's go ahead and push play. Leave your predictions down in the comments. James Bond, the world famous secret agent 007. John Wick, the legendary hitman who did the impossible. Whether they fly solo or operate on behalf of the government, the world is filled with professional killers of all shapes and sizes. But which one of cinema's super assassins is packing Parabellum, and which one will live to die another day? He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. So I already love the fact that it's these two guys like bantering off of each other. I think that's hilarious. Uh, they're already their own cartoon characters, so this is fun. From the shores of Crab Key to the crap stables of Casino Royale, from Russia with love to Moonraker at the edge of outer space, no man has saved the world more times than Bond. James Bond. He's the OG action hero, the slickest Scott there ever was, the coldest warrior of the swinging 60s. After a climbing accident in the French Alps took his parents, the young James studied abroad and graduated to the Ministry of Defense. Okay, that's cool. They know some of their history. World War II. He rose through the ranks, quickly becoming a commander of the Royal Navy. And when you find the thing you're good at, in his case, wanting murder, oh, never boy. do it for free. <laughs> So after the that war, James decided on Her Majesty's Secret Service and became a special agent of MI6. And they were so impressed, he was given his first two state-sanctioned assassinations. With this baptism in blood, Bond was granted the legendary double status and a license to kill with impunity. As the premier defender of the West, Agent 007 is a jack of all trades when it comes to kicking commie ass and terrorist ass and basically everyone's ass for the past 60 years. From the novels to the movies to the comics and games, he's been rebooted tons of times, but they're all still Bond. Bond is a master of infiltration, disguise, acrobatics, driving, diving, oh, skiing, octopusy. boating, climbing, horseback riding, <gasps> airplane pilot, swordsman, knife fighter, knife thrower, people thrower, and deadliest of all, gamer. People thrower. <laughs> Bond carries his classic Walter PPK, among the world's first successful double action semi-automatic pistols. While it only carries nine rounds, its small size makes it optimal for concealment. And a microdermal mm. sensor in the grip That's not accurate. Bond's fingerprint means only only he can fire it. It even comes with unique ammo that breaks apart of entry six plus one. and creates eight exit wounds, traveling like a bullet but hitting like a shotgun. Especially deadly considering Bond has the golden eye of an expert marksman, able to take out a room of armed guards in a single second, or shoot the fuel tank of a helicopter from a speeding boat a quarter of a mile away. He's just as deadly disarmed. Bond combines multiple martial arts like judo, boxing, Krav Maga, Muay Thai, and Jiu Jitsu, allowing him to keep up even when outnumbered. This mix of styles is likely the Welsh self-defense system known as Kushinkwai, which is taught by the modern Special Air Service. Though that all pales in comparison to Nailed his greatest ability. Bang banging. Laying down pipe. He's so proficient at seduction, it actually feels more like a superpower. Look, we're not kidding. He once seduced a female assassin sent to kill him so thoroughly, she threw herself in front of the bullet meant for him. She knew him for less than two minutes. Yeah, sometimes Bond does stuff I can only describe as superhero shit. Look at this. So why not follow that impulse and give if him you haven't gathered there may be language too. in this video. Developed by MI6's resident quartermaster, Q, Bond's spy gadgetry often complements his knack for problem solving and quick thinking. He's got a pen that'll explode after three clicks Who doesn't love and disarm Q? after a fourth, an Omega Seamaster watch that can shoot a laser beam, a cigarette that fires a miniature rocket, and C4 toothpaste that can be remotely detonated. Probably a safer bet than that pen, especially if you're a compulsive clicker like me. Wait, was I on three or four? He 
also occasionally wears a lightweight bulletproof vest, as well as a garrote wire for quiet kills and a grappling hook hidden within his belt buckle. That's only the semi-normal shit. He's carried earbuds that give him super hearing, x-ray shades, ultrasonic cufflink grenades, a stun gas keychain, a cell phone taser, exploding remote-controlled drones, a nano suit that turns him completely invisible, and a freaking jetpack. You've got to have a hell of a pair of thunderballs to piss off a crazy Scott riding one of those. But his greatest weapon is the one, the only, his dick, the Aston Martin DB5. Oh, I thought, I thought we were still talking about him. Never mind. This absolute beauty isn't just good looks. She's packing front-mounted machine guns, oil slicks, smoke screens, and of course, the ejector seat. Oh, and good luck trying to break in. This baby is insanely bulletproof. Like, yeah. just look at this. It won't stop. Still going. Still going. Q has provided numerous vehicles over the years with ever more insane features, like a submarine Red transformation, light-bending holograms, and a remote control built into Bond's phone. Uh, just look at him, living his best life. And why wouldn't he? He's a globe-trotting ladies' man with the UK Treasury as his personal credit card. He's got the world in the palm of his hand. But for some, the world is not enough. Though Bond's iterations may vary, one thing remains throughout. Behind that debonair smile and British wit is a broken, soulless shell. A man Ooh. only good That's a bold killing. statement. I guess it's no surprise that a dude who smokes up to 70 cigarettes a day and routinely drinks enough to enter a coma might have a death wish. Now, James wasn't always like this. Not long after getting his double O, he found love and loved so much he left the Secret Service behind. But there are some lives you can't escape and some lives you can't save, no matter how hard you try. Sometimes all that's left is to kill the love inside you until all that matters is revenge. There's no denying Bond's <laughs> A bit dramatic, but okay. He's killed hundreds of enemy combatants over his career and might just enjoy the act of torture. But what makes me respect him is he never forgets a pun afterward. All that hate and regret wrapped up into one man with nothing to live for. The perfect assassin for a dying empire. Bond is strong enough to hold his own against superhuman henchmen like Oddjob and Jaws, who can lift a van off the ground. He survived being blasted by a stinger missile, falling hundreds of feet into a river. A lot of great stats on these things. They're really cool. Scrambled. At his best, if you're not familiar with the franchise, they will teach you a lot. Nearly of point blank and missiles. While in free fall, oh, that's such a great, oh, that's people. such a this great is the superhero scene. shit we were talking about. I love time that part of the time game. Time again, he's outsmarted criminal masterminds like Doctor No, Goldfinger, and Scaramanga, the man with the golden gun. He's even bested the worst of them all, his arch nemesis, the international terrorist Blofeld. In two different timelines, no less. And plot twist in the second, Blofeld was Bond's bum 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 long lost adopted brother. Which, if I recall correctly, also happened in Austin Powers. But that's why we love the old Scottish so and so. Who else could escape a giant space laser by kite surfing? We don't like to talk about that. What more can we say about 007? He's got the best job in the business, and nobody does it better. Okay, so already just kind of kicking this off, I think they nailed a lot of the stats pretty well. Let's see what they have to say about John Wick, Mr. Baba Yaga. You Death are just battle. screw up, like really badly, like make the worst mistake ever. So bad you're just f for the rest of your life. Yes. Uh, let's lay out a hypothetical. You see a car that you like, but its owner won't sell. So you follow him home, beat him senseless, steal his car, and kill his dog. The dog his beloved wife gifted him after she died very recently. So yeah. Pretty Not big good. mistake. And this man, well, he just happens to be the single deadliest assassin in the entire world. He may be called Baba Yaga, but he's not the boogeyman. He's the one you sent to kill the goddamn boogeyman, John Wick. So yeah, that's one pretty huge mistake. The full story of this specter is almost non-existent, but rumor has it he was trained by the Rusko Roma crime syndicate from a young age before moving to America and making a name for himself in its criminal underworld. 
terrifying enough to scare the living daylights out of even the most hardened murderers. Wick is a master martial artist, combining several schools into an all-purpose fighting style that focuses on maximum efficiency with minimal effort. Almost no one who has fought him directly has lived to tell the tale, so which specific forms he practices are for his eyes only. So why don't we look at the martial arts used to prepare for the movies by everyone's favorite immortal, Keanu Reeves! Reeves combines Sambo, Aikido, Judo, and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for defensive joint locks, throws, and wrestling moves to avoid as much damage to himself as possible while using his opponent's own weight against them. Though his go-to is Krav Maga, which is designed to take all the best moves from various martial arts to make the ultimate fighting style. While most martial arts are designed with Nasty. other purposes in mind, like exercise, Krav Maga's entire goal is basically murder. And boy, if that isn't Wick to a T. In his hands, literally anything can be a deadly weapon. Knives, swords, books, his belt. Shit, he once took out three guys with a pencil. A number two pencil. And thanks to John's precise understanding of the human body, he can target weak points and vital organs with ease. But thanks to the Continental, he doesn't have to rely on writing utensils to execute his victims. Imagine a chain of hotels around the world that serve as a front for a whole underground society of assassins. He can consult the white That's just cool. The Continental's an awesome Pistols, element in the revolvers, movies. revolvers, submachine guns, assault rifles, shotgun, plastic explosives, it's all on the menu. Yep. Though Wick prefers his Heckler & Coke P-30L, a polymer-framed mm -hmm. semi-automatic handgun that holds 15 rounds of 9x19 Parabellum. Which he wields like an artist does a paintbrush. Wick can empty entire rooms Fantastic full of enemies firearm. before they can blink, once even taking out seven armed guards in only three seconds. He's the definition of accurate, almost never missing a shot, and that includes on horseback and motorcycle yeah. back. If he's got a view to a kill, you can bet he's taking it. And he comes literally dressed to kill the with his perfectly tailored <laughs> tactical line puns. suit jacket that is completely bulletproof. Even repeated gunshots from close range do nothing to him. It also helps him blend into the shadows for some sick stealth kills, and even disappear in plain sight like the goddamn Batman. Wick eventually joined the Tarasov mob and quickly became one of their top enforcers, a grim reaper who hunted their enemies with divine prejudice. But maybe this angel of death was more human than we first thought. After years of being a badass, Wick wanted out of the mob to get married to the love of his life and retire. Wow, I wonder how that first date conversation went. Man, she must have really fallen for him. I guess he put the ass in a sack. We can all see where this is going. So his boss gave him an impossible task. He could leave if he wiped out every last one of the mob's enemies in a single night. Which he did, because human or no, he's still John Wick. And he lived happily ever after. Well, until his former boss is not no son screwed up. Like, really badly. Great job, Theon, you never miss. That wasn't just some dog, but a semblance of hope. The opportunity to grieve unalone. His last tether to a happy life. So Wick was back with a vengeance. Prepared to kill every last person that got in his way until the whole of New York's criminal underworld had been raised by his bloody crusade. Over the course of the three movies, which span only about two weeks, Wick left over 300 bodies in his wake. Three hundred. Running into him is like seeing the Gun sky food. fall. You're going to die. There's no escape. He survived being stabbed, rammed by cars, shot in the stomach, blown up, mutilated, and knocked off of a 10-story building, all within a fortnight. Oh, and somewhere in there, he found the energy to trek through the Saharan desert. And it's not like his injuries from the previous movie I had mean, time tough. to heal, or the ones from the movie before that. We cannot emphasize this enough. John Wick is unstoppable. He's strong enough to toss around full-grown men, snap, bone, and body slam two assassins through a bulletproof glass floor. Wick absolutely annihilated his former Tarasov employers, the Neapolitan crime family, Kimura, and fended off an international army of assassins attacking him at random, one after the other, every few minutes. Even after being declared excommunicado by the Continental, bereft of his former resources, he killed every last soldier sent after him by the high table. With barely a quantum of solace to rest. Like we said, <laughs> completely unstoppable. Outgunned, outmanned, it doesn't matter. John Wick lost everything in the world that meant anything to him, and that means he won't stop killing until there's no one left. 
or he dies trying. And good freaking luck with that. This should be good. We're getting ready for the final battle. Let's see how they stack them up. I feel like it's like an unstoppable force meets an immovable object. And I don't know who's gonna win on this one. Bond's got a lot in his arsenal, but Wick, he's pretty damn unstoppable. All right, the combatants are set. We've run the data through all possibilities. It's no time to die for a death battle! Hilarious. Here we go. He's not one to be taken lightly. Be careful, 007. Ooh. And happy hunting. Your concern is always touching, Q. Vodka martini. Shaken. Not stirred. But of course. What can I get you, mate? Drinks are on me. I prefer to be alone. Unfortunately, I wasn't asking, Baba Yaga. Now you can come with me, or we can do this here. Killing isn't permitted on company grounds. Lucky me. Seems you've got me at a disadvantage. You won't mind giving a dead man walking one last smoke? What does MI6 want with me? Your reputation precedes you. I'll be sure to keep up. No, you won't. To be entirely honest, I lost count. <laughs> <coughs> Love it. Comes around, goes around, as they say. Yeah. Oh. I think. Did we get it? Bond. 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 Come in. What's the mission status? Smashing. Positively smashing. <sighs> oh, do grow up, 007. I've cold chills. I you never got thought it. Wick could lose, but I guess I'll never say never again. Though his skills and brutal tenacity would have saved Wick initially against James Bond, you only live twice. Oh, that's you so much mean fun. Once, right? I know what I said. Uh -huh. Well, despite all that, Wick met his match in Agent 007. And match is the optimal word here. Wick may have been an expert martial artist, but Bond has actually practiced several of the same styles Wick has and has been shown to be just as skilled a fighter, even defeating master martial artists himself. Wick's ability to shatter a floor of bulletproof glass definitely makes him superhumanly strong, but Bond has fought off similarly powerful henchmen in the past. 
And Touché. while Wick's speed and accuracy with a gun may look unbeatable, Bonds is just as impressive. He's landed accurate shots just as well as Wick ever has, but more importantly, he has a faster quick draw. That's right. Despite being played by Neo himself, Wick has never dodged bullets. Bond, on the other hand, has. And that superior speed gave him an edge in both close quarter combat and on the draw. Though since both had body armor, the fight probably wasn't going to be won by guns alone. And that's where Bond held his biggest advantage, his gadgets. There was no way Wick would see an exploding pen or a laser watch coming, and that's the whole point of Bond's gadgets. They're right. seemingly normal, everyday objects that'll take his enemy by surprise. Given time, Bond has always used these to come up with game-winning strategies, even against numerically superior foes, especially with his more absurd technology like the invisible nanosuit and remote-controlled explosive drones. Wick's endurance might be mind-blowing, but he isn't invincible. He can keep fighting even on death's door, but the deadliness of Bond's trick weapons would not have given him that option. Diamonds are forever, but against someone just as skilled with an arsenal straight out of science fiction, Wick's luck definitely wasn't. Bond may have been the spy who loved me, but against Wick, he was going to live and let die. And you can bet, tomorrow never dies. Nailed it. Look, I just had to fit the last few movies in, okay? Oh, wait, shit, I forgot about Octopussy. <laughs> Uh, the winner is Bond. <clears throat> James Bond. Nice. It appears we have lost yet again. All right, guys, what did you think? Death Battle, Bond versus Wick. They went at it head to head, toe to toe, gun to gun. Bond came out on top. That's what he does. I loved seeing how they mixed up the fighting styles. I love. <laughs> I thought it was super slick. Him lighting the cigarette, using the cigarette bullet. These are fun. You're they they do these on so many characters if you haven't checked out the deathmatch series check them out on youtube they pair up some interesting characters too but when i heard this was coming out i knew i had to review it we all knew bomb was going to come out on top come on be honest he's got the car he's got the gadgets he's got the fighting skills as awesome as the wick movies are he's just no match and he proved that here in this episode of deathmatch guys thanks so much for watching and as always merry christmas 007